to pressure Alliance into any bad situation. Yeah, the late game uh, is always something that Alliance is very skilled with. And uh, we're going to see if they get to the late game against Team Secret, because Team Secret is known for being very strong in the early game. So it's going to be a little bit of a mix, <laughs> uh, mixed strategy here. Previous time these two teams faced, Alliance beat Team Secret. Now that was a best of one. CC and C, what are your expectations coming into this winner's bracket finals? Uh, I think I think most people would favor Team Secrets. Uh, I think they've, they've been playing quite well uh, recently. They they were a little bit shaky at the start of the group stages, but I think day two onward they've been playing quite well. They looked super strong versus. Uh, who the heck did they play? Oh yeah, they look super strong versus NIP. Yeah. Granted, NIP is probably considered the weakest of these four teams, but Oof. I think still they do their re did their research as well. Banning off the jug, I think that's like a hero that almost everybody bans out against Loda, just because it's like super comfort pick, and they're like very down to take it first two. Pilot Eye Wisp is dope. So I, I think most people would favor Secret. I do too. Yeah, that, that ban on Juggernaut too, not only you said Loda plays it plenty, but in that best of one of the group stages, sure enough, they played against the Loda Juggernaut. And yeah. they uh, surrounded that with the uh, with the Magnus as well as the Ogre Magi. So it was the whole buff up the Loda strat. <laughs> and uh, he just got a little too crazy that game. So they don't want to deal with that again, as you mentioned. Yeah, but they are oh. going to get their comfortable Wisp pick, but the Ogre pick for Alliance now. And the Keeper of Light is still in the pool as well. Previous series, we haven't really seen Keeper of Light being super dominant in the draft. We've seen it banned out a couple of times in the second phase. But is it did something like did people figure out Keeper of the Light? Kind of, or have they just gone different plans to not fit in their strategies that well? Uh, I don't know if they've figured it out. I think teams have started get, have gotten a little bit better at playing against it. Whenever they know that Coddle Dual Offlane is coming to their lane, they'll block their own hard camp. So the Kyle isn't able to push the lane and then pull that on hard camp. Uh, so yeah. it, it decreases the amount of farm and levels you're getting quite a bit. Uh, people, I think people have started doing. They also just like leave the off lane or leave that safe lane like very early on. Pick a hero that can rotate and try and make moves around the other lanes. But I think it's still maybe an underutilized hero. I think it's a hero that has a lot of potential. Um, but also if it's not played very very well, it can fall flat pretty easily. It's, it's very squishy. Doesn't have like a, you know a stun. Obviously the mana leak is kind of but. So it has a, a pretty high skill cap, I think, and a lot of these lower skill teams sort of like bring the win rate down, I think, to a place where, you know, the teams like EG, OG play the, the hero to like its full potential and it looks like incredibly strong. Clockwork picked up for Alliance. Jonasum Fan is such a beast on that hero. And I wish I could say the same thing for MP on Ember Spirit, but I can't. Because his performance on Ember Spirit was not <laughs> super wow. high. Dang. Just wow. Shots far. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I will. There's not enough shots on this on this panel <laughs> right now. She would just has to go no. full savage. When we saw MP on the Ember Spirit, like he has really stable games. He is normally not really the most flashy player because that's all on Pi and mid one. But MP has been stable, no. and especially you yesterday. You can always give it to mid one. Oh, it's true. That's true yeah. That is true. I'll back that up though. I mean, MP. It, it, the, if there is a weak link on Team Secret, he has been a little bit of the struggle on the yeah, team. But especially the first day. In the first day of the group stages, yes. Several of the matches that I casted of them, I, in fact, I do remember him playing the Ember Spear, and he made a couple of odd decisions. In fact, was that? Yeah, he was playing the against Alliance, sure enough, in the group stages. And there were yeah. a couple of moments that out of position, it felt like, wasn't really with the team with the synergy. So I, I definitely I definitely see what you're saying there. But uh, it's it's a new day. That was, you know, a couple yeah. of days ago now. Oh, I, I, yeah. I'm a fair yeah, believer so. of momentum as well, and, yeah. and they're looking hot, so... Uh, you also have that wonderful thing in Team Secret that can make up for bad positioning. It's called Puppy and Pilot Eye. It's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the amount of experience that Pilot Eye gets on this IR. So I'm more interested to see like how Alliance pick up uh, the next pick. We saw NIP really fail to do it with their older Titan from Syndrome, not stopping the Iron Talent IR. He basically got all the farm, everything he really wanted. So you couldn't stop him with that. Ogre can potentially invade into the jungle as well and make a bit more of a problem for the IR but what else are you going to really do? Because just moving up there for a second is not enough, especially when you want to probably commit the Ogre to tilting the balance at the mid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's why they picked the Ogre to go mess with the Io, because you can't let him just sit in the jungle and get like level 4 in 3 minutes. Uh, Io's not a hero that typically has like a ton of laning presence early on anyway. But do you, do you commit to it? Because I didn't see Syndra ever commit to actually stopping the Io. He was more like, oh, I can still really help out in the mid. Now I'll go up into the jungle as too late, level three. Yeah. Uh, I think that's part of that. It's just an I NIP playstyle thing. They almost always play around Quakefa. Uh, they picked this ogre, I think, specifically to give him a good lane, like a start, like every single game. It's very, very consistent. 
Whereas I think other teams will put the Ogre in other lanes and it's more situational. Um, but I think Alliance is not a team that will always snap up this Ogre in the first two. We've seen their first two vary quite a bit. And I think them taking the Ogre like this is a response to the IO. I think they were expecting them to pick the Wizards. They didn't ban it out. And we've seen it had a lot have a lot of impact in the past couple of games. Yeah. Ban out the Centaur, which Secret have been picking, but it's not like... Uh, you don't think of the Centaur as like, that's the reason Secret's winning, whereas you see the Wisp, and it's more of a pop-out hero. So I think the Ogre is going to be the response to it. And we'll see if Pi like jungles, uh, if he starts on the other side and tries to dodge where the Ogre is, or if they get a ward down, scouting where the Ogre is headed to. Because I think he is going to try and bop this little, little floaty ball early. Well, there's no reason why he can't just start in the bottom lane if the off lane is not taking too much farm there. Yeah, so far Team Secret, they've gone pretty greedy with uh, Puppy's hero so far. Yeah. Is, is this a game where they can do that again? Looking at the draft, I mean, is the Lions going to allow that? You, you kind of let it go with Puppy. Like, I think like the late Nyx pick, which happened earlier today. Yeah. Like, you wait until the, show the what last round of draft. Like, I'm, I want the best interrupt hero that's against, uh, in this case now, Alliance. Uh, but I'm going to wait until it gets a little bit deeper in. Or maybe not. Okay, well, screw you, puppy. Um, <laughs> you'll get Rubik. No, but th they <laughs> have been pick waiting until later to, uh, to do it. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. R R Rubik, Rubik still does exactly what I'm looking for, like probably looking for him to do, which is to really mess with the clockwork, and there's so many good abilities to steal, too. So he, he's not going to be sad about that at all. And the most played hero this event. You were talking about that earlier. Yeah, he's the number one, number one picked hero. Yeah. I guess he's not banned material, generally. Yeah. And still a very solid. Well, there's this. You maybe should. There's some, so but many other heroes that can just cause you issues. The Rubik. It's easy to let him slip through because you both are like, oh, we can. It's still an option for both teams later on, and he's not that critical. He's going to change or like make or break the game. Yeah. When they you uh, when you're structuring your draft, at least. And hey, hey, K2 Enigma. Enigma again. And that's the reason to big Rubik so that you can't get countered straight away. It's the same thing they did in the second game against uh, NIP, picking the Rubik and Enigma as uh, three and four. What are your thoughts, CNC? I think it's interesting they picked the Enigma into the Silencer. Typically, you'd think of Silencer as like one of the better counters for seeing it versus the Enigma, as you can kind of just stand really far away from the fight and press R, and Enigma doesn't really do anything. Um, but I think teams have been haven't been picking Enigma so much for the black hole lately, as much as he just farms Stomach. so yeah. fast. You get the you know a lot of teams have been going for the Mightiest. You get to the 120 GPM talent very quickly, and then suddenly there's just Enigma that is just passively getting. You know, 200 gold a minute, not counting the that the hero's a pretty fast farmer, and also a decent laner. So, like, since we you know we talked about the ogre, probably not going to be in this safe lane. Um, the wisp could potentially come down here uh, in a little bit. I think the enigma will have a decent time versus silencer. I'm not actually sure how that lane will go. If he'll start in the jungle or what. Um, <laughs> He's. It, you think of the previous. Oh my <sighs> god. I just look back and a Phantom Lancer's all of a sudden out there. I've seen okay. a Phantom Lancer win yesterday with Cloud9. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it it <laughs> happens <laughs> sometimes. That well, happens. what's the, Okay, so what's the logic here? Why? Well, it's, it's great to disengage from the from the attack of the Lions. Is like, it's, it's a really slippery hero that to, to kill off, and with Naya behind him, too, uh, you can get away with running like a non strength lineup if we're not going to count Aya. Uh, just because of the amount of sustain they're going to have, and as you said, like the Enigma free, like like farming up really quickly. When that mech arrives, Team Secret's going to have a real hard lineup for Alliance to one lock down and two clear up. I I think Secret ran these exact same cores. I think the supports were slightly different, but they ran Ember, PL, and Enigma uh, in a previous game. And I think the the PL's pretty nice here because whenever you're versus Silencer, you don't want these heroes that jump in. That are like reliant on initiations. You kind of want heroes that just sort of run in and are able to run at the silencer, either force him to global to defend himself, or just run away. Uh, I think the PL and Ember do that quite well. Um, the ogre, ogre is sort of the same thing. Not, not really any catch between those two heroes. Uh, the heroes that need to be ahead to really do that much. Uh, I think the PL has a pretty nice time in lane versus the clockwork. Uh, and we once he gets like level three, Ruby gets level three. The, uh, I think they'll have a decent amount of kill potential against his clock. Uh, and it, it like it allows you to run at people and get an early lead. And then like once the mid game comes around, you still have these like very very mobile cores. You can get bots on the Ember, you have bots on the PL, you have this Wisp that can pull people around. And Enigma farms very fast as well. So you just have like these five heroes that can all get a fair amount of farm. And so you just have this entire farmed lineup 
which is kind of what you want versus silencer. You don't want just one or two farmed heroes. So the mm -hmm. global, you know, you just counter them out. You kill one hero with in, during the the silence duration. You have this whole lineup that all have farm, and it's not really that easy to deal with with just like this global and killing one specific hero, which is typically what the silencer is used so for. So you favor secret. Yes. All I right. I think they're just better. <laughs> you're you're just waiting for the. Which which side of the court are you on? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's secret. <laughs> what about you, Tobes? Um, it's very hard for me ever to go against an enigma. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sentimental value. Yeah, I I like secret lineup as well. I think Alliance have a lot to work with, so I don't think this is going to be a very easy game for Team Secret. But I would love to see just how well that Aya goes and Enigma goes early, and that's the reason why I'm backing Secret. I think those guys are going to get into a really comfortable position early on. It's going to create a lot of space, and Secret are just going to out-control and out-survive Alliance. I like the final pick of Timbersaw, actually. You know, talking about the, the Phantom Lancer pick, but Timbersaw seems like he's going to be able to do pretty well against the Phantom Lancer uh, with the Illusion Clear presence that he brings to the table. Um, but, you know, going back to the Enigma, again, the idea that Clockwork Silence on the other side, of course, they faced it in the previous series, and that proved not to be too much of an issue. Again, not as much about the black hole as it is about the lane and the farming that he brings to the table, as CC so was it talking is. about earlier. With all of that said, I'm going to go with my boys Alliance. All right. Game number one. All right, I uh, will side with Secret for uh, this one. Previously, Alliance proved me wrong. Let's see if they can do it again and hear the words of Odie Pixel and Merlini. Uh, it, it's kind of, you know, they ban out CK because they're scared of heavy illusion because they don't actually have the uh, best AOE clear or the best heroes to deal with it. Uh, so PL is, I would say, subpar compared to the Chaos Knight, but it's still playable. I personally don't think PL is that bad. It's just, it's just hard to find a good build on a PL. Like, Scepter is decent, but... I mean, what, you think he's going to go Ags this game? Uh, Actually, we, we think so. I think we saw Secret... Was it Secret the other day that did play PL? Uh, it was I definitely in a game where there, where there was an Enigma. I think it may have been Secret the other day. Uh, but he didn't end up going for the Ags. Who, yeah, which team Ags was it? Was it? We did see an Ags PL in another game, however. I think that was it. Was that an NA Dota? I think it was an, an NA team, maybe, that went for the Ags first. I remember Gareth bet on it, and he lost. Yeah, was that was that a secret game? Uh, they did run PL. It was, yeah, and in, in that one he didn't build the Ags, I don't think, did he, in the end? This is the exact same lineup that they had. I, I, told, I thought it would, we'd seen it before, versus and Bears. we had. And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Secret versus Bears, Secret had this exact lineup. So we could look at it, we said, oh, that's, that's what they're going to do, item builds. Emulate it. MP did not go for the Ags. He preferred the, the kind of more standard before the Aghanims started to come into favorability for, for some players. Manta Diffusal. And uh, Pi, of course, had that, that game where he goes for the Midas, BKB, and then the Lotus Orb. Oh, no, Midas, no, sorry, Midas, Lotus Orb, and then BKB. Of course, and then elsewhere, everything was pretty standard for the others. Uh, mid one, of course, one of the Ember Spirit players that seems to uh, value the Veil a lot less, which seems to be kind of a, a common, uh, more occurring theme, doesn't it, between Ember players? Less people are, are getting the Veil every time on the build. It depends on how you want to play it. I think uh, with their lineup, like PL does very little magic damage. Yeah. Even if you go for Ags, it's not amazingly good, I would say, uh, because your right clicks do a lot more. He has a ton of agility, and your illusions hit like decently hard. Uh, the Veil is also particularly useful if you need the armor, but uh, like this game, only Luna is really doing physical damage, so you don't need the armor too much. I don't think he needs to get it this game. Do you think with the um, with, with the, the silence, do they have enough catch for to deal with like the Amber Spirit and the PL? Because these are two very elusive cores. If Timber's farmed, yeah, because yeah. Timber uh, can. They don't really have a good way to deal with Timber. PL's very terrible at dealing with timbers. Though. Gosh, yeah, they can't. Yeah, there's going to be a point where it's going to be very hard to kill them, especially if he well, obviously gets the hood at the stage. Yeah. The the PL still at that point, a lot of the damage output early on is going to be relying on the spirit lance burst. Before he kind of gets the spirit lance not do that much damage though. I mean that's the it always feels early on PL just it's hard for him to to offer a lot. He needs the items. Yeah. And if he if he doesn't get the fight, but, but I guess he should have a good time in lane because Jonas and Fan, as you mentioned. Not too much that he can do to slow down MP's farm. Mm -hmm. I think the Timbersaw is more important to get farm than the Luna this game, actually. Okay. Just because, like, if he's out in front, he needs to be able to, like, create distance, too, in between the Enigma and the rest of uh, Alliance. So that, 
They can't set up for black holes. He can clear all the PL illusions super easily, get tons of gold from that. Uh, and Ember does decently versus him, but I think he's the only hero that actually does a lot of damage versus the Timber Cell of this game. But as you said as well, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how this mid lane goes down. You know, with Limp having to deal with the Ember Spirit IO. It, it, how does this matchup go down, do you reckon? Uh, in a normal IO babysitting lane, not that great for Timber, but still not that bad because of Reactive. But uh, Pi has Iron Talon, so he won't be in lane. Immediately, EGM heading over to block one of the camps, but uh, it was all spotted out here by Secret. So they knew that he headed over, and immediately in response, Kezu gets the straight-up D ward. So maintaining control of this area of the map, and uh, in good time as well, making sure that the spawn still occurs. And Kezu will be able to find a early few levels here in the safety of his own jungle. Yep, it's very nice for him. He can actually tank the creeps too if he wants, because he has that tango regen. Up top, Hans can actually come in with a bit of harassment onto Puppy. As uh, we can see Pylar die already in the jungle himself. It is indeed that Iron Talon Io that we're starting to see the Io players pull out and to get those quick levels to begin with. And Hans can just uh, is dancing around with Puppy. Puppy holds him back. Both supports just trading blows. Leaves the mid, la mid lane matchup, of course, as a straight 1v1. And at the moment, both here is able to pick up the farm. And bottom lane, Lodo, of course, getting a free lane with Kezu in the jungle. Going for these early levels. So, pretty passive laning stage, really, considering all things. Definitely working out better for Secret, because they're able yeah. to take double jungle farm at the moment. Uh, unfortunately for Kezu, they weren't able to block any of the Radiant spawns, so EGM is also going to be able to get a lot of experience in that lane. And right now, Kezu is out of camps after he clears the Seder camp, so I wonder if he's going to head to lane. Uh, it's currently not pushing his way, but he can't really go anywhere else because Io is already taken to the other side. Yeah, he's level 3 in 2 minutes on the Io. Pilot Eye is very consistent with this. Yeah, absolutely, and very close to having the money for the bottle as well. I'd, I'd seem like if you can be that efficient with that, those opening levels, there's, is there really any reason why you would pick Io and not do this at the start? If you're worried about getting interrupted. Okay. Like yeah, I, yeah, for sure. Bounty Hunter or something like that, perhaps in the game, you might be a little bit more hesitant to do so. Well, talking about Kezu, he's, he's ran out of his camps. He's come straight over and aggressively taking some of the camps away from Alliance's half of the map. EGM will have eyes on him. Uh, but let's well, see what happens here. Kezu... Actually, with the one point, so he gets the point in Midnight Pulse, no point in Malefice. So he can't really chase down EGM, but at the same time, EGM is not too much of a threat to Kezu himself, as Kezu will be fine backing off. Mid lane, the chains, bringing Limp down low. And uh, as we can see, CSY's mid one has the slight edge. Top lane MP tries to make a bit of a go there. Puppy didn't quite come in immediately with the telekinesis. May come back in, he's trying to make the pull. Jonas and Fan, because he chased down MP, the telekinesis is there. He'll trap them in the cogs. I don't have quite enough damage to bring down Jonas and Fan, and he himself, not enough damage to bring down either member of Secret. So Phantom Lancer does not have a, a stout shield, so he's actually not faring terribly well in the lane. Clockwork 18 CS to Phantom Lancer's 12. Oh, that's true. Yeah, MP's struggling. Yeah, he is struggling a lot. There was the Ogre around in that area, so it's not terribly unexpected. Han skin trying to interrupt Pilot Eye's jungling, but Pilot Eye is level... No, he's nearly level four, four and Hanscan is... Uh, he's nearly level two, but there's a, a massive deficiency. He might die here. I think yeah, he's going to die. For sure, with the spirits out, and Puppy with the body blocking has a telekinesis as well if needed. And there we have it, just to secure the kill on Pi. This is going to be a rich little Io. He had free farm in the jungle. Now he's got first blood under his belt as well. The ogre decided to mess with the Phantom Lancer instead of messing with the Io early on. Uh, Pi has done this exact same thing a lot of yeah. times on Dire's side. So it should not really be a surprise to Alliance at all that he's doing this. And by the time he gets there, he's level 3. And how are you going to contest that with a level 1 Ogre? Especially when you're so deep inside the Radiant side. So I would have... Like, his trade-off was, okay, he, he uh, hurt the PL CS a little bit. But PL's going to catch up quite easily. They're actually eyeing up the Enigma there. Limp came down as well trip with VGM trying to pin Sakezu off. But he finds himself a Hastrian. Jonas and Fan. Coming around with a rotation, but there's three members of Secret that are ready to meet him. Chains from mid one catches both of them out. And Pi will get run down here by Unison Van with a battery assault. May get himself the kill now, Pi. Ooh. Oh, that rocket. Dodges was the rocket so flare. Close. 
If that hit, that would have been a surefire kill. Two points in that rocket flare, but that tether dodge, very nicely done by Pi. I really do like Unison fans, Clockwork. He plays very proactively, does very well in the lane, and nails the hook shots in the mid game. I like that maneuver, because the Ogre's not strong enough to mess with the IO, but the Clockwork definitely is. Bottom lane, hands can and DGM and Loader for a moment were behind the tier one, really looking to put the pressure on and try and catch out Kezzy. Kezzy's playing it safe. Loader, of course, getting a lot of space on this bottom lane. As we can see, the farm for both Loader and Limp. Looking very good at the moment. Enigma, Kezu does not like the soul ring. Going for the arcane. A lot of people get arcane and soul ring. Loader and Hanscam may have come in a little bit too close as uh, Hanscam will be left behind. Bit of a saving grace for them that Loader will survive. Let's see, could come in with a rotation, get themselves a kill. And uh, get that all oh, that valuable experience for Pile I Die. Level four and a half. Clearing these camps as well. Banning was going to be there soon. It's going to be a very quick level six on this Aya. At this rate. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Yeah, the only downside is he actually has to share camps uh, with Kesu Because they have two semi-junglers, I would say. Who gets the bounty prod? It is Pi. <laughs> Fills up his bottle. Really wants to get that six as soon as he can. As he's just about to touch upon level five. And they wow. can no longer mess with Limp in the mid lane. He's... Three reactive, yeah. four reactive now. And mid one just has to squeeze as much CS as he can out of this lane. And mid one immediately remnanting away as soon as signs of danger come through. As Hans Kent turns up with a rotation. Top lane, MP as well, also getting space and farm on the same level as Loader at this stage. So they're both finding equal amounts. How's the experience game looking between them? It's level six and a quarter. Uh, but a little bit better for levels, uh, MP. In fact, nearly a whole level ahead of Lo Loader. Uh, so Loader has had a bit more babysitting in his lane, being done by EGM in the neighborhood. Smoke up for a secret. They're ready to go for a play. Pi, Puppy, and Mip1 making a beeline down towards the bottom lane. Kezu has the black hole available. They'll scan it out successfully. Secret are going to move in for the kill. What can they find? Observer down. They see EGM. That'll be an easy one. And maybe like a bigger kill. And uh, they do indeed like, turn their attention towards that lane. They really want to find Loader, but Hanscan's positioning, safeguarding effectively the, the Luna. The Courier will come in. It, it will be taken away just in time. Good telekinesis. They'll look to chase down Loader as well. Rem them forward. Have they got the damage to do so? Yes, they do. Take them down with the Flame Guard. And Black Hole straight up from Kezu. They're looking forward to move in for more kill secret. And with the chains on two from mid one, and they find this Jerry Jonas and him falling incredibly low. They can't quite finish him off. As he could get two kills, Pi is not going to get out though. Limp with a nice rotation as well as Alliance come together, make sure that they can find at least something in return. But at the end of the day, Secret do get that kill they wanted. They bring down Loder on the Luna. Loder kind of sidestepped back into there. That was a pretty good black hole by Kezu. Uh, but Clockwork with those completed power treads was able to uh, tank up through that. That was pretty nice positioning by Hanskin. Hanskin's died a lot this game, but I think he's had pretty good intentions in uh, where he's been. Like, he just wanted to sacrifice his life for Loda just yeah. in case something funny was happening from the left side. Of course, whilst this all went down, MP continues to get the free lane up top. Uh, so pretty much the entirety of Alliance's attention was drawn down towards that bottom lane. And bottom lane, once again, Loda has to be careful as he falls fairly low. The aggression of Kezu and Pai. Top lane, EGM and Jonas and Fan. Maybe see if they can make a play. Jonas and Fan has the hook shot in a few seconds. Very hard to catch out MP though, leaving the illusions behind to block a potential hook shot. As MP will be able to back away. Secret once again making a move down on the bottom. Puppy didn't grab anything. TPs will be coming in for limp. They want to try and hold and defend this tower, and potentially even a fight if Secret coming a little too close for comfort. But already Secret backing away. Pi now does have the level six. Relocate at his, at his, in his tool set. And looking at the net worth, we can see that overall Limp is the one having the best time this game. Had a pretty good time in the mid lane. We, we kind of wondered how it would fare against the Ember Aya, but with obviously Pi focused on the jungle, it did mean the mid lane was opened up for, for Limp to have a pretty good time against mid one. He almost has his hood. He's yeah. going to be impossible to take down if he have, if he has reactive uh, stacks up going into the fight. They're going to have to expend a lot, like triple remnant, plus fade bolt, plus 
searing chains and then some. Right, this is going to be a pretty big, big timber saw. There's no doubt about that. MP still interested to see on what his plans were with, with his items. Brown boots straight into the helm for MP. So he has that health regen. Plus 10 HP at the moment. Uh, mid lane though, Jonas Afan coming in with a hook shot. Puppy immediately having to get Jonas Afan out of the cogs, but the damage from the Chakram. More than enough for Lions to pick themselves up a kill. More money's the banker limp as he maintains his top spot this game. I wonder when Phantom Lance is going to get involved in the fight. It's always kind of a tough call for Phantom Winter. You're not like particularly strong early. You want to fight once you get your defusal. Uh, but at the same time, if you get defusal too early, you don't have the stats to back it up and you can't just run into the fights. But the Helmet Dom, I think, has pretty good value here. You can share the battery assault. You can block hook shots. You can tank Eclipse uh, with those. You can purge off Bloodlust. A lot of things you can do with that one creep. They're looking for a relocate opportunity. Pilot Eyes Radiance looks geared up to relocate somewhere just in case something mm. happens. And here comes the answer to your question, Ben. You know, MP, now they're moving him in. They're taking him down bottom. And with the black hole, back and ready. They want to fight down bottom, but the Lions are actually avoiding this. They move towards mid. Each and Loader coming across. They do have a global silence if they see an opportunity to go for something, but mid one has the Invis Rune and, of course, the backup from Pi. So. Alliance won't be able to find a catch in the middle lane and this will leave the safe lane of their own open for secret to find that tier 1 tower as Alliance still really want to go mid. If Jonas and Fan can hit a hook shot, maybe they can make an attempt but only Pi's there at the moment. Mid one's actually headed up top with the Invis rune. Can't make a go on to limp of course with that completed hood. He's too big to deal with on his own as mid one will just deal with the creeps. Push it back out. At the end of the day it's secret finding a tower and just finding a little bit more of the map in this last minute as Alliance couldn't get that jump that they wanted mid. Yeah, not at all. And Alliance slowly but surely conceding towers as Enigma exerts his conversions all around the map. And they're able to farm with the Ancients too quite early too. So Secret actually getting a lot out of the map, a lot more out of Alliance. 4,000 net worth lead. And this is with the Midas on the Enigma, so things are, seems like it's only going to get worse, especially with Luna just slowly coming online with their Helm of Dom. And there's the relocate coming in from Pi. They spotted out Yonis Afan, who's immediately going to go for the TP out. He isn't going to make it, though. Damage is there. Secret take down the clock. So they can move on for anything else. Move on will be taken back. back towards the mid lane. EGM trying to find a, a quick bit of fun there. On the silencer at the moment, but he does have to be careful. Miv1 is going to look to try and wrap around from the side. Yeah, he starts arcing up. Wants to make a good use of that. EGM's got to be so careful. He's come a little bit too close. The chains will connect. Secret move in. Kezu forward in with the Malefice as they take down Silencer Limp. Trying to find something in return. The curse kicks in onto the embers. Miv1's one's held back, but they get the kill that they were looking for. And they get themselves safely back out as well, Secret. That was a bit lucky on the chains. He did it in the middle of the creep. Yeah, there's a lot of creeps there. All skill, Ben. All skill. <laughs> All skill from mid one. Well, Limp, of course, queuing up for the Bloodstone next. We are going to see uh, the, the Midas for Jonas and Fan. That he is certainly favoured. I, I, I feel like pretty much every time we have seen him play the clock. I do like it here. Yeah. It's going to be a slower paced game because Luna's... Luna's just not in a position to really do anything right now. He can't really fight the Ember Spirit. Yeah, a little bit behind the, the top few cores loader. He does need time and opportunity to catch back up. Obviously, once they're able to, to really get together a push and take some Tier 1s, that, that's going to rectify that difference. But uh, the question is, how, how can they find that opening? Alliance, they are going to smoke up. Move up towards that top lane. Try and finish off this Tier 1. That's the target. Puppy's there in the neighborhood as well. Secret will just simply look to put on pressure down bottom. MP has got the boots to travel gold. And Jonas and Fan, can he get the opening onto Puppy? Puppy not revealing himself at the moment, just staying right back. He really wants a six. Oh, very, very close. A couple of creeps would do it, but Alliance really wanting to fight here. They sp I know, spotted out with the creep, and in fact, it's a nice little body blocking here with the helm of the Dominator. And with the setup blast, it's going to be close to killing him. And well, EGM wrapping round. They're going to have it for sure. It's Puppy taken out. And that was, yeah, I, yeah, must have been, yeah. Loader's the only one who could have had the creep. So just nice little play from Loader. Body blocking Puppy up. 
and making sure Lance can close the gap for the kill. And poor Puppy's still not six. I don't know if anyone used a Tome on the Dire side, but they are using the Enigma to get this T2 very, very quickly. T2 has been slain almost exactly the same time as top T1 is slain. So, uh, Secret's still getting a lot more out of the map. They can farm both jungles after this T2 has been down. They can farm even the Radiant Ancients, I would say, at this point. Oh, may bomb with this haste rain. Looking towards Jonas and Fan. Alliance, well, already Hanskens backing out. He does not want to fight here. This is going to leave Jonas and Fan on his own. Curse kicks in as mid one is silence. Hook shot across. Jonas and Fan looking for Pine with the help of Limp. They get him just a literal second before the relocate back out. And Limp getting himself onto the killing spree hype train. And more money towards that Bloodstone. Limp still holding a very steady game at the top with his Timber Soul performance. I wonder if it's worth considering a Silver Edge on the Phantom Lancer to deal with the Timber Soul this game. Are you talking about the, the BSJ Blink Silver Edge build? Let's not go that far. Okay. <laughs> Blink is uh, not really necessary here. I think no. uh, the Silver Edge is so nice for Timber. The problem with PL against Timber Cell, if you hit him, you're just going to give him 20 reactive stacks. For sure, yeah. So. You can't kill him on your, on your own. Yeah, y you can burn down all his mana with Diffusal. That's kind of nice. Yeah. But he doesn't have Diffusal yet. But I think it might be a consideration later into the game, just because Timbersaw is so fat right now. Like, he hasn't even come close to dying at all at any point in this game. Yeah, it, was, it seems to have just been a perfect pick, really. We kind of wondered how they would play it, but the decision to put him in and have Limp on it has certainly been the right one for Alliance. As uh, he's just the recipe short. And the Bloodstone will be complete. And at this rate, it's more than likely that he will be able to start building up the charges. Loader. Of course, just trying to finish off that Yasha on top of the helm and the Dragon Lance. Still just slightly behind, but it is very, it is very close really at the moment between the cores. Now another tower and Alliance will be on pretty much the same level with some of their, their key figures in this matchup. I know Ludo, Lodo was probably considering the Midas. He's like, man, I could get it. Nah, Midas, Luna, really, Ben? This is the sort of game that you would get it in. Okay. It's pretty slow paced. So you, you could have legitimized it. You could have. Why not? I don't Dude, know. Loda loves his Midas. But on Luna? I definitely think you farm faster with uh, Lance and or Yasha. But okay. still, it's Loda. Sure, there's always uh, that possibility. I think, I think he gets Midas more than any other carry uh, at the moment. You think? I think so. What uh, other carries get Midas? No, you're probably right, actually, on the safe lane. Yeah, on the safe lane, position one. I think he's number one. We need a stat. Nahaz. 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 I think he's sleeping. Is Nahaz sleeping? He can do stats while he yeah, sleeps. Yeah, he's sleeping. He has that power. A mid lane alliance coming in with a push. And like you say, the second tier one so far of their game. And uh, they would be more than happy to fight if Secret turn up. You know, Lim has the Bloodstone, Loader. He's got the level two Eclipse ready to go as well. Limp is so big. Oh, he's massive. Oh, how 18 minutes in. Kill him. He's certainly going to feel like one of those games where the secret. They can't. They've, they've got to kill everyone around him. You got to do something about this, though. I mean, Your towers are getting mowed down. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this is this is absolutely exactly what Alliance wanted okay, to I execute. See, look at mid one. <laughs> he's just behind the creeper. Okay, this is what their plan is. Just don't fight Cut at the all. Creeps. It's working. Can't they just go to Roche, though? Have Silencer sit outside? Do Roche? I right, saw some pings around the area. MP. And the man nearly with the complete defuser blade. Mid one's going to come in. Relocated forward by Pike. And bam. I'll take down Yonis and Flat. More gold for MP. And now, Secret. They'll be able to get a tier one in return. Ember did go for the Yules uh, build. Immediately after the BOTs. Very oh, common pickup versus the yeah. Silencer. I think it's a really good build versus Silencer. Yeah. They, they can't really punish like him if he self fuels. Mid one straight wow. in. Mid oh my one. God. Do you need a veil? What the heck Absolutely was that? Absolutely destroyed the two heroes immediately. They may even get more. They're looking towards Limp. Do they have the damage to do it? The Midnight Pulse is doing a lot of work here. Limp has to kill himself. As wow. they will actually bring down the Timber. That was swift. And of course, he did get that suicide off, but still, 
Knocking down those Bloodstone charges before he was able to pick any up. Isn't it crazy that Ember can do that much damage without any damage items? I mean, it's, it, yeah, but Yules and bots, yeah, that's the fighting time. That's, <laughs> that's absolutely insane, really. When he you was play it like that. very perfectly positioned. Uh, yeah. And he's also killing the two least farmed heroes. EGM went for a Midas. On Silencer, which I think is fine. There's just no, nowhere for him to farm. So, like, Midas will increase his GPM by a lot because he's just not getting any creeps. Limp's farming out in the dangerous positions. Luna's farming the jungle. So, where does that leave Silencer? Especially if there's no kills to be had. I just... I mean, I with these Midas's and, and with the Luna, if the game does go on and on, late game, our Alliance find you, Phil, or, or is the, the lineup of Secret Fair a little better in the later game. I think it's pretty even. Pretty Timber Salt deals yeah. with the PL, but PL kind of deals with the Luna. Okay. Ember is going to be pretty big, but it, Silencer with the Midas potentially could have like Refresher. EGM does like his Refresher into the later game. Uh, so I don't know. It's uh, it's not purely matchup based this game. Let's see what they can find here. They're trying to whittle down Limp, but of course immediately has those 20 reactive stacks up. The hood out as well. They have one leaning forward, trying to go for one of the back line. Is his hands came with the searing change. The rest of secret coming forward as well. They'll keep the tower alive for the time being. On the side though, they've caught out Jonas and Van, and he will be the first casualty from Alliance. Secret take down one. And seeing if they can move forward for more. It's going to be hard to catch out any of Alliance though, as they're already running for the hills, retreating out of there. But secret hold. They keep the tower alive, and they give themselves a kill. That is the second time that Jonas and Fan has been completely out of position. I know that he's looking for the hookshot, but usually you'll come in from like the right side, uh, like in inside the trees, um, kind of bat rider style, so that you just don't get caught by a stray observer ward. Yeah, and he's actually quite important in these fights. I scan actually from a uh, secret. Trying to catch out Luna. That would be the perfect kill. As Loda is keeping himself in a very solid position this game. BKB next on the menu. And uh, just a recipe away, really. Has the money for that Ogre Club. So that will be coming out sooner than later. And with the BKB, uh, a really huge amounts of what Secret can do in terms of killing him is, is negated. I mean, you can still get the PLN on the front lines, but... I would have gone for Butterfly. Really? Over, over the BKB? It feels really good. They have global. Against the Amber and such. Yeah, that's actually that's true. Ember would just kill you. Because he's got the, yeah, I guess if he didn't have the Yules maybe, and then the Global was going to be more effective at this stage, but... Because but your farming rate, but you had to deal with PL too. The BKB, you yeah. can tank the PL, but you can't actually kill the Illusions that quickly because PL is actually getting a lot of farm too, almost equal net worth uh, to the Luna. And Luna Luna's going to have to build BKB, whereas PL does not have to build yeah. it. So he's going to be like 4,000 gold up on her. I guess that's what the Timber's for. This could be again, though, couldn't it, where later on the PL may buy BKB against Alliance's Heroes, if it gets to that point. Yeah, if he gets to that point. It, it depends on what Luna goes to. Yeah. Uh, if Luna goes like Butterfly, he's going to need maybe like MKB Basher or some, something like that to stop her damage output. If Enigma doesn't get farmed. So Enigma, what talent do you think is going to take at 15? 120 GPM or 15% cooldown reduction? I think he'll take the 120 GPM, will you think so, but will he? I mean, he's got the Midas. He, he wants to go for the Greed, surely, Kazu. Get Shadow Blade, get refreshed, get all the Dream items for, for the Enigma. I mean, 15% cooldown reduction. How, do the math, man. How, how much does that knock it down? Well, it's down to what? 20, uh, 24 seconds 24 at second max 16, level. Yeah. So. That, that's I mean, it's 135. 24 seconds. And I think it's really good because it coincides with global cooldown, too. Like, you're, okay. you're never going to yeah. be. That's true, yeah. It makes it yeah, pretty much similar. But if he gets Octarine, it'll also be. Less better. than global cooldown. But then if the silence he gets Octary. He's got a mind he's back to get Octary. One day this boy's <laughs> gonna be rich. <laughs> One day he might get refresher. Oh Ben it's off cooldown. There's no creeps though. Oh he's, no, let him have a creep. Let him have a creep. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're all good, we're all good. There you go. BKB now done for, for Loader. The thing is, do you want to fight now with the BKB? I think BKB is imperative on Luna, but I don't think yep. right now. Because they have two Midas's, one on the silencer, one on the clockwork. Do you really want to fight with those to not having those items kicked in yet. I mean, because Limp's so big, surely you, you, you still can. He has the Lotus Orb It's not like he, he's not going to get bigger. 
He can have off yeah, the ring plus scepter easily, or Shiva's Shiva's scepter. Maybe they do feel threatened a little bit by you know the the rate that this PL is farming. Uh, they want to get these objectives done, shut down this uh, half of the map, get control of Secret's jungle. But a uh, secret, uh, smoking up. They have a great observer ward placed right on top of them. Oh my goodness! Here's the jump in mid one gets the change onto one, force back on the clock. Mid one curse. We'll back away, so you can have to be careful about how they go around this. Alliance keeping their distance. MP trying to go in onto Yonis and Phantom finish him off. Can't get there quite, get the damage done. Kezu still has that black hole, but the global is still available. He can't use it yet. Limp moving forward, loads the sword on himself. They really can't do much about killing this Timbersaw. They can try and hold him back, but that's about it. They can burn his mana. He's low on mana. He has the back. So Secret will stop the push attempt. They don't really kill. Actually, relocate from Pi up to the top. They're looking to try and cut cut off maybe a straggler from Alliance, but Alliance have headed straight down south. MP trying to close the gap, see if he gets a chance for a Spirit Lance. Actually missing the chains combo there, so they don't catch anyone mid one. As Alliance group up by the Shrine, and immediately they want to fight back again. They have a reward themselves on the side, Palanay oh. running right over it. Back and forth action here between the two Titans. EGM. Global Silence to the ready. If they see an option to jump, they may... Certainly go for it, Pi. Well, he's the first target. Can they actually close the gap? That's the question. Limp comes in, hits the Chakram. They'll take one down, but then return. Mid one comes in, burst down EGM. The Global Silence comes out. Loader pots the BKB. There'll be a buyback from Pi Light Eye. MP falling low to the Eclipse. Loader needs to find another target. MP comes back in, trying to finish off Hamskin on the back, but the Lucid Beam from Loader comes out. MP's down. Alliance get the big kill. Puppy closing the gap here with a stolen timber chain. But can they actually kill Limp? They don't have the damage. Mid one gets cut down. Puppy stuck in the trees. Alliance take down another. Where's Kazu? Black Hole would have owned that fight. I don't. I, I was expecting it to come in post I, the Global Silence, but I it never so did. Too. It yeah. never did, Ben. He has the Greaves too. Just immediately Greaves it off. But I think Clockwork was just all up in his grill the entire fight. And Kezu does not have BKB yet. He is just yep. 300 gold away. Imagine if that, he had actually had BKB. Yeah, that fight. would have been the difference. Yep. That would have been the difference. And Timber was... Just, he is just mega farm. He destroys PL. Even, like, before that last engagement, yeah. uh, like, PL dropped from, like, 100% to 40% in one Timber chain, uh, one timber combo. So this is uh, kind of a dream Timber game. Yeah, a really nice fight for Luna as well. You know, he's put Loader right at the top of the board. BKB was absolutely perfectly utilized there. And uh, he's very close to having the Mantis style complete. Puppy. Going for the warding. The rocket will spawn him out. You know some fan? PL just seems so useless. Like, he has a ton of net worth, but he just can't do he anything. He dies so quick. I mean, 1,300 HP. That's that's not great against a Timber. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, what do you actually build? Gosh, it, how do you... That's, that's the thing. Well, how do you build it? Defeza doesn't give you HP. Helmet Dom gives you a little bit of HP. Manta is not the best item on it. It's great versus the global, though, so he kind of needs it this game. How are you going to farm without the BOTs? I don't know. I, 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 I struggle to find a good build for Ember Spirit. Or, sorry, for uh, Phantom Lancer that doesn't involve you just dying instantly in a fight to well picked uh, counter picks. You know, some fan heading across, but. They did have this ward there, Secret, so they will know what's up. So unlikely that they'll let Alliance get a, a, a jump on, and indeed, immediately in response, Secret TP across. Ward from Alliance will spot Kezu moving into position. And uh, Puppy's still under the cover of smoke. They have BKB on the Enigma now. So yeah, that's huge. That's huge. If Clockwork hooks in and yeah. Global is used, then he can use his ultimate freely. Yeah, a lot of weight on Kezu really to pull that off in these team fights because they absolutely need it. They need that extra bit of control to stop Loader and Limp getting out the damage. He took cooldown reduction, by the way. He did. <laughs> Against the greed. Against the greed. I'd like to think he did that after seeing that, that fight up top, maybe. You know, he maybe didn't even use it. it with the cooldown reduction would have done nothing for him. No, but you know what I mean? He's like, okay, this is how the game's going. If it continues to be as passive as it was, you know, he saw, he saw two Midas on the other side. He was like, all right, we can do it. But uh, yeah, I guess you're, you're right. There's, there's a lot of actives. And hey, 15% reduction on the Midas cooldown, maybe that mathematically... Does not give you 120 GPM. Maybe it gives you 12 GPM. It gives you m the more than 12. Do the math, but that's a hard math to do. I think uh, 15 Midas... 15% down on Midas. How much GPM does that increase it by? Um, that's, some, that's some tough maths. Midas gives you how much? It depends. Well... 
190 you... gold. And the creep gold. Gives you 100 and... So, say on average, taking it. Well, what's you an average jungle creep? What? Gives you 190. So 190 gold every oh, okay, yeah. 100 seconds. Well, 85 with the thing. So I think it gives you 100 and like 15-ish GPM. So increase that by actually. Uh, yeah, it's cl it's close. It will give you like I don't know, maybe roughly like 20 more GPM. Okay, but but your other spells also. Yeah, your other spells also. You Agreed, can like, TP you can faster. Yeah. yeah, you can BKB faster. If he gets a blink, he can blink around faster and do more camps or conversions. Uh, less cooldown. So, I don't know. It's it's debatable. That's actually a really tough talent. I think it's pretty well balanced. Alliance right, into the pit. And Secret, not in any position at all to contest this. Okay, so mid, you only some found him with an infantry. They could maybe even try and set something up as well as getting the Roche kill. That's global, though. I mean, what do you do about global? I know some fan. Oh, they'll get it. And he's oh. looking at Puppy. Luna's going to have Butterfly really soon. I think they can just end the high ground. Oh, Puppy is just he's got the not cape. in a great spot. Uh, can he do this one out? In fact, he's still alive for the time being. He'll try and get his way out of it, but it's not going to work. The burst from the Timber Chain and the Whirling Death brings him down. Jonas some fan nearly dies to the illusions there of MP. But PL is not the best hero. <laughs> couldn't finish him off. He just got cursed. That his illusion got cursed, and then they couldn't catch up to him. Oh, you sounded like a fan of the PL in the draft, then. Uh, Let's change your mind. No, no, no. no. I'm a okay. fan of PL. Against Luna. No, I'm oh, a no. fan of PL, but I know that he's not a great hero. Okay. Is it, you, you, you don't you like playing crappy heroes sometimes? I don't like playing PL. I played PL once, and I built Ags, and then I But what about other crappy heroes? Again. Don't you have a crappy hero that you just love to play, but it's just terrible? Uh, oh, man. I'm trying to think. Or do you only play super I like playing heroes? Ursa. I feel like that's a hero that that's is great at killing people, but it's just crappy at winning games. Okay, so, yeah. See, you, that's, you that's have that. kind of like, you know. I feel I think it's great fun, but he's just... He's For sure, yeah. Great. It's it's incredibly obnoxious if you, once you get the diffusion, just jumping in and putting illusions on the supports and, you know, it's an auto-kill sometimes. But, uh, yeah, in terms of winning games, it's going to be hard. Especially with the lead that this, you know, Lona's, uh, Lona's Luda? Luna's Loda. <laughs> Luda. Luda. Luda has. Luda. <laughs> Luda. Lu uh, Lo Loda has at the moment. He's a clear 4,000. There's a rapper by that name. Uh, you know Luda. Luda? Ludacris. I've never heard of Ludacris. Ludacris? you never heard of Ludacris? That's some NA rap. What? Oh, uh, what other rap is there? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Mate, I'm talking about the proper, you know. English stuff. Do they have English rappers? Uh, yeah, like grime and stuff, isn't it? That just sounds <laughs> grime. Grime. That does not sound very thuggish, dude. What do you mean grime? Grime sounds well thuggish. That oh, sounds pipe? like some something from the sewers, dude. Yeah. Pie. I was gonna say talking about the sewers, but that was really harsh. Pie's been having an amazing tournament, but uh, he did get caught out there. Tried to bank his way out with a quick TP. Doesn't matter. Has reliable gold. He's done, yeah, absolutely. Managed to use his Midas. That really is the big win there. He must have just used that before he died as well. Dude, that just increases GPM by like 20. Just using it before he died. How many how many Midas has we got this game? Uh, Four, I want to say. Uh, we've got well, two on the two. Well, one on the support, two on, yeah, one on the court. One on the support. And uh, one, of course, on the off lane up. Mid one. He's found EGM. EGM's out and down. Who needs Veil? Mib1 with his build so far. Maelstrom, Octarine complete. Looking for the Shiva's guard. And Mib1's actually eyeing up more. Spots out Alliance. They can't actually catch the Ember, though. Hands can't. Oh, you didn't want to walk up into that one, Sunny Jim. Immediately taken to pieces by Mib1 and MP. 13 to 10. Secret. Still trying to climb back up with their, with their PL, at least. Ember's becoming a menace. Yeah, mid one, as expected, really. I mean, we didn't really expect anything less when he had this this Ember pick guaranteed for him. 7-1-5. Very, very solid performance. That, are, they, are they thinking about going high ground? How are you going to go high ground against Timber, dude? Timber is just going to own everything. Nah, it's really, and MP's very low on the mana as well. There's no way they can push high ground right now. It's a distraction. Clears the space for mid one to get the tier 2 mid. Now they're back up, I guess. Yep, they did get a lot of damage on that. Surprise. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Loda, tier 3 is nearly gone. Loda just... I think he can just play super far up. I think he was...
back farming his butterfly, which is pretty important. But yeah, that T3 is almost dead at this point with uh, what I would deem a pretty terrible siege lineup coming out from Team Secret. Not exactly what you want, but that's sometimes what happens when two heroes die, two supports die right outside your base. They had Aegis though! Aegis is only one one minute left. Yeah, they'll see that they might try and get something done with it with this mid push by the looks of it as Alliance yep. uh, gearing up to Here they go. neutralize it. Butterfly is done. They've got a lot of damage if they can get the lock onto someone. Mid one already backing off. With the mid lane, MP being cursed up by EGM from the sidelines. The hands can. Ninja with the jump forward. In return, though, MP goes straight onto the Ogre. Ogre's out. Alliance, their one man down. You'll set up onto the Luna. Watch Kezu. He has the blink. Has the black hole, but of course Global Silence still at the ready, he's got to hold on to it. Puts the Malefist down onto him, chains again, bringing Loader down low, and he's going to be popped once almost certainly. The evasion actually saving him, tries to run his way out, and he's he's going to actually keep the Aegis intact. By the looks of it, they can't quite finish him off, they'll turn towards EGM, take the easier kill. And since the Silence are out, Secret get to, and that looks like, yeah, the Aegis has just expired. Loader's heal back up to full, but the Secret, they know this, they want to try and find something. Jonas have found going to be easier for the TP up. Will use him, of course. It doesn't matter that he's loaded still. They don't mind both being thrown up into the air. As MP will claim the kill. Double kill for MP. Three down now on Alliance. Dude, this game's all mid one. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, th there's a reason why teams are banning out the Amber Spirit against Secret. That's for sure. That is so disgusting how well he's playing. 817, 300 CS at the 36 minute mark. In terms of damage done, he has to have done more than his other two cores combined. Oh, easily, I think. MP stun is a push in. Alliance have got to be careful. No global for 10 seconds. This be a lovely time for Kezu to get a black hole, and he's looking for it. Will go for it. Only catches Lim, but it secures the timber kill. Timber down. Now Luna can go in, though. Kezu's backing off yet. Yeah. They, they do just get the range racks. Melee racks still stand on this bottom lane. Throw the illusions in onto Loader. So, secret still sticking about. Wow. MP went for magic resistance instead of evasion? That's quite curious. Magic resistance is not value here, I think, because he's up against Timber. Timber does so much pure damage that um, it's not particularly great. But it does tank Eclipse, pretty good for Silencer, but Luna and Timber so will still destroy it. So all in all, Ali uh, you know, Alliance losing a few of the heroes, but they don't they don't lose the melee racks. I feel like that could have gone a lot worse for them if they'd... Oh, that could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, at the end of the day, they do manage to stop Secret from pushing in. And uh, still, MP just a little bit behind that, that value of the, the Luna and the Limp Timber Sort. And to get knocked down, a few Bloodstone Charges, though, down to nine. Mid one pushing out on bottom. And uh, we'll TP out. And uh, no one is going to be able to find him in time. He's out back to safety. And Alliance look like they're grouping up once more to try for a bit of a push themselves. But this time we'll be without that Aegis. It's going to be hard for them to push high ground because they have to deal with constant PL illusions. You actually will have mana issues because of the defusal. You have to deal with Midnight Pulse. That's one wave that you just can't push with. And Ember Spirit is obnoxious when you're trying to defend high ground, especially when he's this farmed with Octarine. Uh, he is level 25 as well, so... Say hello to permanent Searing Chains, or near permanent. And Loda, Manta dodging the Spirit Lance. Lim and Loda trying to stay on the high ground. Loda's all onto Lim as he's hooked up by the Telekinesis. And actually killing though, Lim falling relatively low, down to less than half health. Mid one heads forward, gets the chains onto two. Sip across from Lim as he looks to escape. Loda has to put the BKB in turn, they've lost hands, Ken. Secret, can they get themselves anything more out of this one? Loda pops the Eclipse. More of a defensive one. In fact, with the Global Science, they look towards the Ember, but the Yules is there. Alliance have to be careful. There's the Black Hole from Kezu. Catches out three as Secret shut down the entirety of Alliance's push. Great Black Hole from Kezu, but again, I think props goes to mid one. Yeah, mid one. Forcing the BKB out from the Luna, catching two of the heroes out, and baiting out the Global Silence as well as he remnants into the back line. This guy is doing everything. Oh my goodness. Now he's being their seizure too as he right <laughs> clicks his tower, traps Luna so he can't even get hit. I guess Luna's got to be careful. Loader pulled back for this. He goes down again and the game's over. Secret pushing in on the mid lane. What can Alliance do to stop this? There's still two men down. And with a Luna that has to be very, very careful. 
how far forward she comes. Again, midpoint just spamming out the slight and the chains. Holding them back with the Shackleman as well. Loader already down to less than half health. Look at him. He's just melting. In fact, he's gone. That's the die back there from Lu Luda. Lona. Luda. Loader. And mid one. He's looking for more glory. Comes into the midst of the four of them. This man, no fear whatsoever. A little low on the mana, but he doesn't care. Sticks around. They're taking them all down. Alliance just melting outside of their base. And GG, well played, is called. The game is all over. Secret taking it very convincingly at the end. And I'd see if she, you've got to ban that Ember Spirit, I think, Ben. You can't let mid one have it. They just had a lot of draft issues, too, because they wanted an AoE hero to deal with the Timber Cell, but they also wanted more lockdown to deal with Ember Spirit. And they chose to go for more AoE. They kind of relied on the uh, silencer a little bit too much to deal with Ember Spirit, and mid one just went out of control. He, I think he had almost more damage than his entire team. Let's see, 21, yeah, absolutely. 35, he had, it's like 44,000 versus 40,000. Well, combined. And his whole team combined. Always. Yeah, well, the, the team combined is what, 28, 36? You're right, yeah. So yeah. a little less, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it's still it's uh, an insane amount. That, that, that damage is ridiculously yeah. high, though. Like, Timbersaw usually has very high damage. Timbersaw is usually, like, number one or number two, uh, but he is way below mid one. Mid one... I mean, Puppy nearly did more than the Timbersaw. Yeah. That, that, that in itself is, is kind of He like, still shot him a lot. Uh, True. On, the, on, on Rubik, but... Ember Spirit set everything up for them, baited out globals, uh, trapped them in place so they couldn't run away from the team fights. didn't get caught out very often, only died once this game, I think. Uh, yeah, that is definitely, when you have an Ember player like that, definitely okay to first pick it. Uh, it's, it's just going to be very interesting to see how they touch upon the draft next game because Ember's an issue. We're seeing how well Secret can play with Kezu on Enigma. Even when you're picking up counters as such, like the Silencer, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. He's still able to play around it. Well, the first phase the too. IO, you know, how do they deal with this little man you know, go into the jungle with a Talon? They needed to go into jungle at level one, I think. Yeah, uh, just try and contest him. And then the Ogre Clockwork opener yeah. is not very good when you can't pick Nyx in response to Ember Spirit. So a lot of things didn't work out for them in the draft, but they still have some time to bounce back in this series. Absolutely. But as it stands, Secret taking the first game here in this best of three, one to zero. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back very shortly, myself and Malini, for more action between Alliance and Team Secret.